This is ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. What's happened in terms of recovery, in terms of saving lives, 16 lives, that's a lot. But you compare that to the thousands of people that died in other hurricanes, and, and, and frankly, we're not nearly as severe. President Trump finally visits Puerto Rico nearly two weeks after Hurricane Maria, and he was criticized for what he said when he got there. 58 killed in Las Vegas. The president says now is not the time to talk about gun control. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohen, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have more on what's been a really tough week in a moment. But first, our top seven stories at 7. The fate of a former Sarasota County Sheriff's deputy is in the hands of a jury. Frank Bobby, Bobby faces a laundry list of charges from exploiting the elderly to theft and attempted murder. Tonight, Bobby is awaiting a verdict from the jury. ABC 7's Jeff Dowdrick is in the courtroom today and has more. Frank Bybee faces 18 felony charges and the jury must decide whether or not he's guilty on each and every one of them. They've been deliberating for about six hours at this point after hearing from both the state and the defense one last time. Today marks the ninth and final day of the Frank Bybee trial. Bybee is accused of stealing tens of thousands of dollars from 80-year-old Marcia Soule and then trying to kill her. During closing arguments, the state made it a priority to remind the jury about physical evidence and testimony independent of the alleged victim, Marcia Soule. That's because the defense argues that her accounts and testimony are unreliable. Both sides targeting jurors' emotions. The state says that Bybee abused the trust and power he had to protect and serve the community. The defense argues that Soul was putting on an act to convince the jury that she is just, quote, a little old woman who was victimized. He chose the perfect victim. Someone who was alone, isolated, and vulnerable. Who could ever imagine that a Sarasota Sheriff's deputy could be capable, and you can dislike him all day long, but you still have to apply the law that says the state must prove their case beyond reasonable doubt. And they have failed in multiple areas to do that. Of course, there's no way of knowing when these deliberations may be over, but as soon as a verdict is reached, we will bring it to you on our website, mysuncoast.com. Reporting at the Sarasota County Judicial Center, Jess Dowdrick, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. The Homes Beach Peace Police Department is investigating the death of a one-year-old boy. The toddler was reportedly found unresponsive while in the care of his mother's boyfriend. The child's name is not being released, but DCF says the child had no prior contact with the child welfare system. Other children who were in the home are now in the care of relatives. Sarasota police are investigating an attempted armed robbery and shooting. Police say two men got into a fight in the parking lot of the Publix on Bay Street around 5 o'clock yesterday morning. Police say the armed robber shot a man in the stomach and took off. The victim is being treated at an area hospital. Police are still searching for the shooter, and police have not released the names of either of the men involved. The father of a 13-year-old Bradenton girl who reported her missing in July is now charged with her murder. Janessa Shannon's body was found after she was missing for more than a week. Now, three months after her death, the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office believes her father, Nashon Shannon, is responsible. The Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office isn't revealing how Janessa was killed. Any homicide is horrible, but a homicide of 13-year-old is extremely tragic and disturbing, even to our seasoned detectives. The investigation continues. More than 130 people are applying to become the next Punta Gorda police chief. The city manager says the new chief must come from outside the department. So far, those applying come from across Florida, the Midwest and the Northeast, and the Mid-Atlantic states. The vacancy was created when former police chief Tom Lewis was fired following a deadly accident during a citizen's training demonstration. An officer shot and killed 73-year-old Mary Knowlton. The city plans to fill the police position by next month. Election supervisors across the state say Florida's new online voter registration system is working smoothly. Earlier this week, Florida became the 36th state to offer online registration. Registering online is intended to make the process more accessible and convenient. The Leon County Supervisor of Elections says it shouldn't be a problem for those wanting to register. 
it's tried and true now. So as long as you're careful and implementing it properly, we've got good encryption uh, across the board. And so I, th I think the learning curve for Florida was reduced quite a bit. Uh, and I think that's why we're seeing such a smooth rollout here. To register to vote online, visit www.registertovoteflorida.gov. It has been nearly a month since Hurricane Irma barreled through the Sun Coast. A lot of debris remains near the side of the road, and the wait may be over. Crews in Sarasota are working across the city. They are expecting to finish the initial pass through the city by Friday, October 20th. As for Manatee County, crews will start on Saturday to collect storm debris. Of course, you can bring yard waste and storm debris to the Lena Road landfill from October 14th through October 22nd. But note, don't mix household waste, bulk waste, or recyclables with storm debris. Place vegetative debris at least three to five feet away from mailboxes, trees, and street signs. Don't place debris on storm drains, and don't park your vehicles in front of debris. And finally, don't bag the debris. Use Hurricane Irma's debris removal hotline at 855-428-4526. It is hard to believe, but we are already into week seven of the high school football season. But thanks to Hurricane Irma and other storms, some teams have only played three to four games. Regardless, teams are getting into the heart of district play, and ABC 7's Dwayne Lindo has more. Well, Alan, with weather being such a huge factor throughout the season, district games are extremely important at this point, specifically this one. Braden River at 1-1 one one, take on the Palmetto Tigers at 4-1 in what is essentially bragging rights in Manatee County. Both teams are ranked top 20 in the state of Florida. Should be a great matchup. Kickoff is at 7.30. And don't forget, football Friday night at 11.15 with your latest scores and highlights. Alan, back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. Now let's head over to Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan live at Music on Main in Lakewood Ranch with the first alert forecast. Bob. Can we plug though? I got to tell you, this is great out here. Uh, I tell you, not talking about any hurricanes, nothing like that. Just beautiful weather. Skies, no rain. And that's good for football Friday night. And these two gentlemen right here, seventh graders from Rowlett Middle School, the place, same place my daughter goes to. Yeah. Uh, we have Oscar and Cole. Oscar, what did you guys do today? I got a fan from the ABC 7 booth. Yeah. Lit. This dude's awesome. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay. These kids are getting a little crazy, as you know. They're seventh graders, you know. I know what to say. Which, 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 what do you got there? ABC Seven Weather Team. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one's the best though. Oh, right there. Oh, show me your point, dude. Show me your point, dude. All right, that's right. I told him to do that. Anyway, thanks a lot, Cole. I love you, Mom. Yeah, Mom, I love you. All right, Las you guys. Vegas. Yeah. Behave yourselves, all right. All right. Uh, I gotta worry about those kids. They're one. They're one year older than my daughter, who's in the same school. They better not mess around. Anyway, here's a look at the graphics. There is a hurricane, or at least a tropical storm, which is soon to be a hurricane. Hurric uh, hurricane Nate will eventually impact, looks like Louisiana, and it will be a hurricane, but right now it's a tropical storm, and top winds are at 60 miles an hour, expected to go higher throughout the next 24 hours. The good news is that it's moving so fast that it's not going to have a chance to stack. And what that means is that we're not going to see the wind speed of, say, 90, 100 miles an hour, but uh, just a, a barely a Category 1 hurricane at this point, it looks like, as it moves in toward Louisiana. And it looks like it's going to pass to the right of New Orleans, at least the center. And that means they won't get the strongest part of the storm, but they still could. They're in that cone of uncertainty, but more and more it's shifting to the right. And look how narrow that cone is. It's amazing how narrow it is. And that's a good thing because there's no uncertainty on this storm. It is definitely going to the northwest and then eventually to the north and then eventually to the northeast. Here we are looking at a beautiful evening, just some clouds, no real threat of any significant rainfall. That's good news for music on Maine and for football Friday night. Get a look at the crowd behind me, too. A lot of kids dancing and having fun. Uh, the band is awesome. Uh, again, we have Kim Betts and the Gamble Creek Band playing. They just took a little break. They'll be back soon. Alan, I'll have the complete details on our weekend weather forecast coming up in a few minutes. Back to you. All right. Thanks a lot, Bob. And still to come, President Trump visits Puerto Rico and Las Vegas after very different disasters. How did that go? I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs 
and you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals, and I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. You studied hard, went to college, and achieved your dream, but it turned into a financial nightmare. If you have federal student loans and you'd like to reduce your payments, get more time, or have your loans completely eliminated, then we have good news. With one call to Student Loan Relief Services, you can find support and guidance. We've already helped thousands of people, and we can help you too. If you have $10,000 or more in federal student loans, you can qualify for payment extensions, payment reductions, or you may qualify to have your federal student loan completely forgiven. Call Student Loan Relief Services now to find out about your options. Take control of your finances and get out from under this burden. One of our student loan experts has the answers to your questions and great solutions to ease your financial burden. We're here for you. Call Student Loan Relief Services now. Call 800-759-0203, 800-759-0203. Do you have type 2 diabetes, which requires daily blood monitoring? If you have diabetes, are you on Medicare, Obamacare, or other health insurance? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for diabetic testing supplies at little to no out-of-pocket cost to you. Our accredited staff will handle all of your paperwork for free. And best of all, your diabetic testing supplies are shipped directly to your home for free. Call now to see if you qualify for a meter upgrade and a free pedometer to monitor your daily walking. Use alternate testing sites, a smaller blood sample, and even hear your results out loud. Will you qualify for diabetic testing supplies and an upgraded meter? covered by Medicare, Obamacare, or health insurance at little to no out-of-pocket cost to you? Find out for free by calling the Diabetes Resource Center at 1-800-394-1098. That's 1-800-394-1098. 1-800-394-1098. Download the all-new ABC7 First Alert weather app now. President Trump is used to raising eyebrows. It happened a lot this week, from throwing paper towels to hurricane victims in Puerto Rico, telling them they're throwing the budget out of whack. And then there was Thursday, with a mysterious, vague remark during a photo op with military leaders. Trump said it was, quote, the calm before the storm, but wouldn't clarify what that means. CNN's Joe Johns reports. Minutes after a meeting with top military leaders, President Trump raising eyebrows with these cryptic words. Do you guys know what this represents? Well, I don't know if the calm before the storm. What's the storm? It could be the calm, the calm before the storm. When pressed by reporters, the president refused to clarify. What storm, Mr. President? We have the world's great military people. What storm, Mr. President? You'll find out. The White House also declining to elaborate on what storm the president was referring to. But his administration is currently confronting a range of urgent foreign policy matters, including Iran, North Korea, ISIS, and Niger, where three U.S. Green Berets were killed this week. Two senior officials tell CNN that the president is planning to decertify the Iran nuclear deal next week. They have not lived up to the spirit of their agreement. Going against the advice of his top national security advisors, including Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and Defense Secretary James Mattis. Do you believe it's in our national security interest at the present time to remain in the JCPOA? Yes, Senator, I do. The decision would kick the matter to Congress, which would then have 60 days to determine a path forward. Earlier Thursday, the president publicly admonishing his generals about the time it takes the Pentagon to provide him with military options with this stunning rebuke. Moving forward, I also expect you to provide me with a broad range of military options when needed at a much faster pace. I know that government bureaucracy is slow, but I am depending on you to overcome the obstacles of bureaucracy. A top Sarasota Republican and Democrat and a top political reporter next at the Trapezoid.
Credit card debt can ruin your life. If you owe $10,000 and minimum payments are siphoning away your paycheck each month, you can get debt free in less time than you think. I've paid $800 a month for the past three years and haven't changed the balance on my credit card. Get Debt Free Now has a program to reduce your debt, stop the harassing phone calls, avoid financial ruin, and settle for less than you owe. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You're pre-approved for our special hardship program if you owe $10,000 or more. Upon payment of your new lower balance, your debt will finally shrink until you are debt-free. My family no longer has 30 years of payments ahead of us at 20% interest. There's no fees until you see results. So call now. Make one monthly program payment and free up your cash. Resolve your debt. Call 800-685-6422. 800-685-6422. If you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie, why buy the whole pie? And you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan? Luckily, there's still a wireless company that shares your values. Welcome to Consumer Cellular. Our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need. Many pay even less as plans start at just $15 a month. You'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular has received the J.D. Power Award for highest customer service three times in a row. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. So stop paying for more than you need and start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Call 800-457-2317. Go online or visit a Target store today. Are you a soccer mom or dad? Regardless of their age or experience level, when your kids play soccer or any other sport, there's one person on the sideline who is key to help recognize and seek medical care for sports-related concussion. It's you. You need to know the signs and symptoms of concussion, and you need to act if you think your child has been injured. Remember, when in doubt, sit them out. To learn more, go to cdc.gov slash concussion. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. Welcome back. We are all angry, and we all should be. 58 Americans died this week in the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. And some of us are angry not just at the madman who did it, but also those who summarily reject just about any idea on how to prevent these massacres from happening as often as they do now. 58 Americans died this week in the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. And some of us are angry not just at the madman who did it, but also that this time the argument that if only a good guy with a gun were there does not apply in this case, and that there is no Islamic terrorists or white supremacists or illegally obtained weapons to blame. Some of us are angry at those already talking about restricting access to anything or even raising questions about whether there's the political will to do anything at all. So let's talk about what to do and whether there's the political will to do anything. Joining us is Christian Ziegler, State Committee Man for the Sarasota Republican Party, Kevin Griffith, the Vice Chair of the Sarasota Democratic Party, and Jacob Ogles, the Political Editor for SRQ Magazine. So, Christian, we're all trying to figure out what to do here. I mean, this is happening, it seems, yeah, every year or so, the number of those who die in these mass shootings continues to grow. And people on both sides of the gun control issue are, are looking for answers. What's yours? Well, it's still too early. We don't have any facts on this guy. We have no idea what the motive is, which is interesting because typically you find out the motive within, you know, the first 24 hours. Um, but we have no idea. And some of the stuff that you mentioned about Islamic terrorism or terrorist and some of the other things that that you said were eliminated or aren't there. We don't know if that's the case or not. So they're going to do a deep dive. We need to figure out exactly why he did this. Um, and I think it's wrong that we're, I mean, here we are less than a week out. We're talking about gun control. We have no idea why he did that. We're not focused on the motive, and we're not focused on really preventing that because that's the only way. Uh, gun control is not going to solve um, all these mass shootings from happening. And even if you look at the mass shootings, the numbers, I mean, people say, oh, they're skyrocketing up. The facts just don't show that. Kevin? Well, here, here's what we do know. We know that a majority of Americans want uh, an uh, assault rifle ban. We know that a majority of Americans want greater background checks. 
we know that a majority of Americans want people who have mental health issues to not be able to get a gun very easily. Those are the things that we do know. And it's time, if ever, when is the time to have a conversation? Now. Now's the time to have the conversation. Kevin, uh, St. Leo College uh, in our area just did a poll of, in Florida. 74.2% of Florida residents or respondents to this poll support some limited licensing permitting or some restrictions on certain arms such as assault weapons. 10.2% of those responded statewide don't want anything at all. So I, I saw you were shaking your head, but obviously, I mean, 74.2 percent of, of respondents, that's a pretty big number. And, and that's a poll, but again, it doesn't go to the facts. If you look at the FBI's own facts, there was 5,000 homicides by gun. gun, gun violence, as you guys refer to it, right? And out of that, 25 percent of them happened in four cities. Chicago, Baltimore, and Detroit, and Washington, D.C. All four of those cities have something in common. They have strict gun control laws, yet 25% of all gun violence happens in those cities. Jacob, you're in a unique position because last year you covered the Pulse shooting. You were there within hours of it. Yes. You heard what, what, um, what uh, Christian is saying. Uh, after covering one of these incidents, you know, what do you think? Well. One, I, I think that it's important to note that while you are right that the number of mass shootings by number isn't going up, the level of mortality at these shootings is. We are seeing rapid escalations in the number of people that die in your average mass shooting, and you're seeing the record broken all the time. When I covered Pulse, it was the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history. That's been eclipsed just 16 months later. And I think that what, what's striking to me is you're, you, there's this tendency to immediately lump the issue of just street crime with these mass shootings. I don't understand why those have to be addressed the same way, and I don't understand why there's a resistance when mass shootings are getting deadlier and deadlier to, at the very least, opening a conversation. And, you know, we don't have any hesitation after Pulse about opening a conversation about the influence of ISIS terrorism. We don't have any hesitation talking about white supremacy on the heels of Charlottesville. But for some reason, immediately we want to shut down a conversation about gun control after the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. But we knew the motives there. I mean, we knew the motives well, in the those motive cases that you brought. We oh, have no idea oh, what caused second. this here. We are just getting warmed up. And we'll have much more on this right after we check the first alert weather. Stay with us. Describe a battery or bulb, and batteries plus bulbs will have it. Tell us what's broken on your smartphone, and we'll fix it. I need a new battery for my phone. And a new screen. What did you do? Visit BatteriesPlus.com for a store near you. This is an important announcement. If you're between 50 and 85 and worried about your loved ones, you can still get affordable life insurance for peace of mind. My life insurance coverage is guaranteed, and I was not required to get a medical exam. I had high blood pressure and diabetes, and I got my coverage with one telephone call. No exam necessary. I'm a smoker, and I wanted to take care of my family. I called to get my life insurance and my affairs in order. I wanted to do the right thing. Call Final Expense No Exam Insurance. Your rates are guaranteed and will never increase. I called and learned that this insurance cannot be canceled, even if you get sick or gain weight. And there are no restrictions on how my beneficiaries use the money when I'm gone. Approval was easy, and the price was right. I wanted to do this for my children. Call 800-738-9812. 800-738-9812. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. 
call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. Watch your Suncoast News at 6 on your streaming device for a chance to win a $50 visa. It's easy. Just watch weekdays at 6 for the word of the week. Then enter the word at mysuncoast.com for your shot at a $50 visa. We'll pick the winner each week. Good luck. Now let's head over to Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan live at Music on Main in Lakewood Ranch with the first alert forecast. Bob. I gotta tell you, Al, it's a great night tonight. I'll be on the warm side, it's not too bad. Temperatures still into the low 80s, and a lot of folks out here doing a little dancing, a little line dancing right there. All ages as well. They're having a great time out here. As Kim Betts and the Gamble Creek Band playing some good music here tonight. Let's go to the maps to show you what's happening. Gorgeous sunset tonight. Boy, does it look nice from our vantage point. The sky just lighting up right now as we take a look at the Van Wiesel webcam over Sarasota Bay. Uh, skies here are partly cloudy for the most part. Great weather for football Friday night, too, as uh, skies are going to stay. Just a few clouds around, not much chance for any significant rainfall as we move through time. Again, uh, we are looking at partly cloudy skies. Uh, chance at 20% for an isolated shower. You can see from the radar picture, though, not much going on at all as far as that goes. And we are anticipating a little bit better chance, though, for some showers and storms tomorrow. Well, here's a look at the latest track on her, our Tropical Storm Nate, soon to be Hurricane Nate, we do believe. Right before it makes landfall, it could get up to a Category 1 hurricane and then make landfall somewhere between Louisiana and Mobile, Alabama as a Category 1 hurricane. Again, not going to have a huge impact on Florida. The Panhandle could see some uh, surge there as well as some heavy rainfall and the possibility of isolated tornadoes as it makes landfall on into the lower Mississippi Valley. Now, as far as the radar picture goes here, as I said, pretty quiet. There's only a few isolated showers that have been scattered about uh, parts of the state. Really, it's been rather quiet. The heaviest rain by far down to our south now. Not much going on over land at this point, and it should stay pretty quiet too. As far as that live sweep goes, uh, you can see a few isolated showers east of I-75 north of Lakewood Ranch right now, but not a lot uh, going on. 86 degrees, we have clear skies, and the dew point pretty high at 75 at this point. Winds are out of the east, southeast at 6, and the pressure 29.89 inches. The high today was a hot one, 90. That was well above average. Tampa actually set a record high at 93 degrees today. 90 at the Sarasota Brayton Airport. Officially no rain to report today. It's been a relatively dry start to this October, and we are expecting a better chance, though, for some scattered storms, at least over the weekend. We're going to get to that boating forecast now and show you uh, the boating forecast calling for seas to run two to three feet with a moderate chop out there in the bays and inland waters. And seas will be running, seas will be running two to three feet with a uh, water temperature now at 82 degrees. And we are looking at the seven day forecast now. Uh, look at the seven day forecast. Seven day forecast is calling for beautiful weather next week. We'll have a chance for some showers and storms uh, coming up on in through the weekend and on Monday. Hey, man, a real men wear pink. How you doing today? Good, how are you? What, what's your name and, and what's your organization? My name is Gary Fennessy. I'm from down the street, Main Street, Trattoria. Bob and I are one of the 22 real men striving to make awareness of breast cancer. I appreciate you stopping by. And remember, to raise money, go to Real Men Wear Pink and either, load them up. Either Bob or Bob or myself, Gary Fennessy. Thank you very much. Gary, thank you. Appreciate it coming by, man. Meeting all sorts of people out here, all sorts of organizations helping out the community. We'll be right back, and Alan will be with his guests just after this. Stay tuned. The 
Venice Area Chamber of Commerce Consumer Expo is coming to the Venice Community Center October 6th and 7th from 9 to 3. There'll be free health screenings, store prizes, and products and services from 75 area businesses. You can also enter to win $100 in five drawings each day. Enjoy the great food court and see new boats and cars in the outdoor display. Parking and admission are free. The Venice Area Chamber Consumer Expo, sponsored in part by ABC7. You got a king? Go fish! In your face, in your face, in your it only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. A promise was made. A promise that hit the beaches of Normandy. A vow that captured Iwo Jima. A contract that weathered Tet. A pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq. An IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise, so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earn. For help, visit DAV.org. We're losing exotic animals on a daily basis, and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Roser from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. 78. If only everyone had this issue. No matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. Welcome back. The deadliest shooting in U.S. history. The president goes to Puerto Rico. The Secretary of State reportedly calls the president a moron. Decertifying the Iran nuclear deal. What did he mean when he said the calm before the storm? And joining us for more is Christian Ziegler, the state committee man for the Sarasota Republican Party, Kevin Griffith, the vice chair of the Sarasota Democratic Party, and Jacob Ogles, political editor of SRQ magazine. Did I say it right this time? Ogles, it's okay. Don't okay. worry about it, Alan. We'll get this right. <laughs> Let's stay on, on the issue of um, Las Vegas for a moment, because, uh, Christian, you said... There's so much we don't know about the motivation of the shooter in this case and a lot of other things, but we do know what kind of weapons he used. We do know from the sheriff's office out there that he had magazines that could hold 100 rounds. We do know that he bought an attachment to the semi-automatic weapon that allowed him to rapid fire. Should anything be done about any of these things? I don't think so right now, no. And when you look at the stats, if you look at the how murders are happening, they're overwhelmingly by handguns. So are I'm not we talking go about eliminate? murders well, but, per but, se. I'm talking about the tools that allow someone to take a massive amount of life in a short period of time. But he, Hold on a second. I, I, I heard an interview the other day with the man who killed Button Laden, who was in SEAL Team 6, mm -hmm. who said that in all his years on, in SEAL Team 6, he never shot more than three rounds at one mm -hmm. time. Yeah. But we could buy magazines that could shoot 100 rounds in a short period of time. Well, no, when he was saying three rounds, he meant at once. Like, he right. didn't go into full auto, right? And that has nothing to do with the, the magazine or the clip, as people call them. Uh, that has nothing to do with that. It is talking about going full auto. When you go full auto, you don't even have the accuracy that you do when you're in semi-automatic and you're pulling the well, trigger Well, he was accurate time. enough so but the other purpose. Day. Well, no, actually, he was spraying the crowd. I mean, who knows how accurate this guy was. No one, again, no one knows what kind of you know, uh, uh, training this guy did to himself to get prepared. No one knows why he did it. No one knows if someone's given him help. And the reason why I keep coming back to that is just banning, uh, you know, guns and banning accessories, that is not going to stop crime. I mean, last I checked, in Nevada, they have a crime against murder, and he totally ignored that law. And when you have over 300 million guns in the United States, criminals are going to go get guns. They're going to go get these accessories that get banned. All you're doing now is you're banning them from 
average citizens that are law abiding. Kevin, average let, let me. Uh, average citizens. <laughs> yeah, he's. I mean, this guy had no. This guy had no. Hold on a second, Kevin. I, let me let me throw a no quote, quote at you from uh, Senator Joe Manchin, Democrat of West Virginia. Quote: I just think that common sense has to prevail, but until that happens, until other people feel the same way, we are at a stalemate, and that's a shame. We got to have the conversation first of all, Alan. We can't we can't just say do nothing. We have to have the conversation. And secondly, there are places where I think both sides could come together. I mean, domestic violence is we I just saw on ABC7 earlier this week in Nokomis, south part of Sarasota County where uh, someone took the life of a wife and a child in there. That's one of the major deaths from gun violence. There are things we can do to prevent people who have uh, violent records or domestic violence records from getting guns. There are other things that hopefully at least start the conversation so that across the aisle we can make some progress. American people want something to be done. Doing nothing right now is not the but answer. When we, when we talk about the stats, you know, everyone talks about how many people were killed, but some of the stats that go undiscussed, and we haven't discussed it here, is you look at females, I think last year alone, over 200,000 times a female used a gun to stop sexual you assault know, from I, happening. I, I, we know, don't talk about that. We, I mean, we it, don't, it we is not talk about I the benefits You're distracting from the conversation of mass shootings. And that's, an, I mean, that's what we're seeing here. But we're not talking about mass shootings. We're no, talking we about, no, 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 Christian, no, you're we talking are talking about, about gun control. control. You're no, talking we're talking about, about gun Las control. Vegas. We're talking about the deadliest mass shooting you're, in the country. And yes, we are talking about gun control as it relates to mass shootings. But you're talking about gun control. And again, that's why we have to talk about the motive. And we have to talk about how to address these people. Because maybe he was mentally ill. Maybe the you had means. some financial issues. Maybe there was some domestic violence issue. No one has any idea what caused this guy. But you need to start looking at the bad actors because last I checked, a gun just can't get up and shoot and itself. Christian, Christian, gun control is about means. It's not about motive. That is a very important conversation to have. I got in an argument today about whether the media is spending too much time analyzing the motives of Stephen Paddock. That's an important thing for the media to do. It's an important thing for law so enforcement when you to look do. At but gun control is talking about the method. And we know plenty about that. We know that this man bought 33 high-powered firearms in a year. And we know that there's no national database to alert authorities to that. Look, if there was a, a classic car gang that started beating up people in the streets of Los Angeles, I expect somebody to knock on Jay Leno's door. That couldn't happen if it was done with firearms. This is ingrained in the Constitution. Number Number one, number two. I'm a you talk about of the, the Second Amendment. You talk about the method. Well, why don't we have a discussion about gun-free zones? Because if you look that in Vegas, that wouldn't have been the case. But you look at Pulse. You look at some of these other places that are gun-free zones. But no one wants to stand up Alan, from the left and say, "Let's have a conversation about gun-free zones." We do want to have a conversation about guns. And why not gun-free zones? We, though? we elect we elect our people to go to Congress and represent us. And you can see the three of us here want Congress to have a conversation about gun control, and they are refusing to do that. It needs to be done. All right, I want to get to one other issue at least in this segment, and that is Puerto Rico. The president was there this week. Um, there has been a lot of criticism about the federal response to Puerto Rico. It was a devastating hurricane. There's no doubt about that. But uh, Christian, let me ask you about the visuals, because there was the visuals this week, I think we have some video of it, of the president throwing paper towels to the victims of a hurricane, saying to them that you're blowing out our budget. At one point, he told people he greeted to have a good time. I'm wondering if that was the great, greatest visual response to our, an overwhelming di disaster out there. No, it's not the greatest visual response. But again, you know, week after week, I'm coming here, and the discussion is always about Trump's tweets. What's he doing? How's he look? You know, uh, what's his hair look like? Whatever. That's what people want to focus on. But when you look at Puerto Rico, what we should be focused on is how to help these individuals. And I'll tell you, the governor of Puerto Rico, he's been nothing but praising the president on the help that the government's been providing. Um, you know, Puerto Rico has a lot of issues. It's really sad. Uh, we're going to have a lot of those individuals come into Florida, and we're going to welcome them. And as you saw the governor this week of Florida, he's done a great job there. Um, but no, I mean, the perception and, you know, throwing paper towel, I don't agree with that. But out of all the clips, why does the media pick that clip to discuss? Because There's a lot bigger issues. Because it, it seems interesting uh, that of all the things to do when you were there, to throw paper towels but, towards a hurricane. But he was there for a long time. There's also the portion of, look, these ships can't get into the, into the harbor, into the ports, to be able to get all of these supplies out 
their truck drivers aren't showing up to get the supplies. Why aren't we talking about that? Why are we talking about paper towel rolls? Seems silly to me. It's a failure of leadership, and it's that simple. And uh, this isn't a surprise. We knew, we prepared here in Florida for Hurricane Irma. They were prepared, or should have been prepared. The governor, I heard, speaking of Puerto Rico, speaking prior to the uh, Hurricane Maria, that they were prepared, and they weren't. And it's the federal government's job, Puerto Rico is part of our country, it's federal government's job, and the head of the federal government right now is Donald Trump, uh, to help and assist those citizens, and it's not happening. All right, we're going to stay on this subject in a moment, and J Jacob, we're going to get to you, but we have to take a quick break. We'll be back with final thoughts when we return. Are you currently on Medicare? In other words, do you carry the red, white, and blue Medicare card? If so, are you suffering from chronic back pain? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for a pain-relieving back brace covered by Medicare at little to no cost, shipped directly to your home for free. These medical-grade back braces are ideal for lower back pain, arthritis, spinal disorders, and other chronic back problems. Our accredited staff will handle all of the Medicare paperwork for free. And best of all, your brace is shipped directly to your home for free. Don't let chronic lower back pain slow you down. Get moving and stay active with a medical-grade back brace covered by Medicare at little to no cost. We also accept Blue Cross Blue Shield, United Healthcare, Aetna, Humana, and other insurance. Will you qualify for a medical-grade back brace covered by Medicare? Find out for free. Call Back Brace America at 1-800-715-0835. That's 1-800-715-0835. 1-800-715-0835. If you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie, why buy the whole pie? And you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan? Luckily, there's still a wireless company that shares your values. Welcome to Consumer Cellular. Our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need. Many pay even less as plans start at just $15 a month. You'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular has received the J.D. Power Award for highest customer service three times in a row. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. So stop paying for more than you need and start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Call 800-457-2317, go online or visit a Target store today. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. Our guests are in this right now for final thoughts. And Jacob, I'm going to start with you because it was an interesting story in the New York Times today. The exodus from Puerto Rico could remake Florida politics. There are so many people displaced from Puerto Rico. We are seeing already kids coming into the Sarasota, the Manatee County schools. Um, what is the possibility that the land, this could cause the landscape of local politics to change? They're already talking about the number of people who are pouring into the Orlando area. Yeah, in, Port, in the Orlando area, the Puerto Rican population is the biggest ethnic minority in the city. And I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's something that harkens back to when there was an exodus of people from Cuba into Florida, and that had a huge impact on Florida politics in the 1980s. I think you could have a similar impact. And one interesting thing is, everybody who comes from Puerto Rico to the United States is an American citizen when they step foot on the soil on day one. I mean, they're an American citizen right now. I, I got to tell you, if you're a Democrat in this area and you want to change the results of these elections, uh, I would imagine a good idea would to change the landscape. I mean, I would, I'm surprised that the Sarasota County Democratic Party is not already dropping flyers over Puerto Rico saying, come live here. Hey, Puerto Rico, move to, hey, Puerto, <laughs> Puerto Ricans, come move to uh, Sarasota. Now, I read some article similar to that. I don't know what impact it would have here locally, but uh, we always welcome new Democrats to Sarasota, that's for sure. Uh, Christian, already 34 kids from Puerto Rico have entered the schools in Manatee County. Lesser in Sarasota, but the school district is expecting more. You know, uh, enough people who can't make a life in Puerto Rico, they come to Florida, and it, as it did with uh, Cuba, uh, could cause changes. 
Yeah, probably so. Uh, it is humorous that the local Democratic Party has to rely on people coming from Puerto Rico to huh. win races locally. But well, um, the Republican Party relies on people moving from other parts of the country to come here. Well, also. no, I think if you look at our landscape and you look at how many times a county commissioner has been elected that's a Republican, I can't even tell you the last time a Democrat was elected. I think it was 40, 50 years ago. Yeah, um, 1970. But 1970? Okay, there we go. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's going to come down to how do we embrace them. We need to embrace them. We need, you know, you look at the governor of Florida. He's been a leader in this. He's been to Puerto Rico. He's been welcoming them. Um, a lot of those individuals are pro-family, um, pro-life. Uh, I think we have a good shot just as much as Democrats get right, their vote. We have to leave that there. But we, before we go, we want to share with you some uh, t uh, comments about last night's topic, the social black belt. The program helps students manage their emotions and deal with the stresses and strains that are a part of everyday life. It is a program Suncoast schools are starting to fund, and we went to Facebook to ask you what you think. Pat says, why do we keep funding programs for things that should be taught and learned at home? Kate says, unfortunately, not all children come from environments where they're taught how to deal with emotions, stress, and how to have healthy outlets. I think the program is, a great, is great and very much needed. And Deborah says, with the pace of life, bullying, drugs, and gangs, and violence, the kids need all the support they could get. Well, if you'd like to join the conversation on tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mysuncoast.com.abc7. And FYI, you can watch past discussions. They're on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. We want to thank our guests for being here tonight. Christian Ziegler is state committee man for the Sarasota Republican Party. Kevin Griffith is the vice chair of the Sarasota County Democratic Party. And Jacob Ogles is the political editor did I get it right? <laughs> Don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> of SRQ Magazine. When we return, we'll have a final look at your first alert weather, plus an update on the mass shootings in Las Vegas. ABC7's Good Morning Sun Coast. Hello, I'm Stephanie Roberts. Sarasota's popular 10th Street boat ramp will be closed as crews work on dredging to help Sarasota Bay. We'll tell you when this boating hotspot is set to reopen. That's Monday on Good Morning Sun Coast. Wendy? And now that the weekend is behind us, we're going to eventually get back to more normal conditions. Monday at 5 on ABC7's Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. The Venice Area Chamber of Commerce Consumer Expo is coming to the Venice Community Center October 6th and 7th from 9 to 3. There'll be free health screenings, store prizes, and products and services from 75 area businesses. You can also enter to win $100 in five drawings each day. Enjoy the great food court and see new boats and cars in the outdoor display. Parking and admission are free. The Venice Area Chamber Consumer Expo, sponsored in part by ABC7. There was this big bruise on my friend's face. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to think her own nephew could have hit her. I didn't want to see it. My mother's bank account was emptied and her caregiver had taken control of it. I didn't want to see it. My father's refrigerator, there was hardly anything in it. That's unusual for him. It's tough to see that a senior citizen is being abused, physically, emotionally, sexually, or financially. Elder abuse is a crime. So see the signs, stop the crimes. Now let's head over to Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan, live at Music on Main in Lakewood Ranch with the first alert forecast. Bob. Al, I gotta tell you, it's been a great night out here tonight. Beautiful. Look at all the people here. One of the biggest crowds I've seen. I think more and more people are starting to come back from up north. I've already talked to a couple of those people already. And we've got Kim Betts singing it right now. Listen to a little bit of this. Take me down. We got Kim Betts and the Gamble Creek Band right here, rocking and rolling. Let's go to the maps to show you what's been happening weather-wise. It's been nice, a beautiful sunset tonight. Uh, tell you what, just a few clouds around now and again, but no rain. And we don't expect any this evening. I think it's one of the first nights, I think, Football Friday night. Yeah, good job, you guys. 
And the crowd loves me. They're going wild. Uh, we are looking at beautiful weather for this evening. Uh, no real threat of any significant rainfall here, but a different story, Yucatan Peninsula and across Cuba, where there are hurricane warnings up or tropical storm warnings as a result of some very heavy rainfall. And the storm heading off toward Louisiana, Mississippi, or Alabama to make the landfall. It's going to impact all three of those states and possibly even the panhandle of Florida as it makes its way northward. Now, we're not concerned about this storm much. It will generate some high surf, some rip current advisories uh, for our coast as a result of the high surf coming in from the waves generated from this storm, but we're not expecting any significant all-day rain event from it, and it's moving so fast, it doesn't appear that it's going to have a chance to develop into a major hurricane, but it should make landfall as a Category 1 storm as it moves on. And no rain around here, pretty quiet, and the current conditions are looking at generally fair skies. Warm night, though, high dew point temperatures. We're talking into the mid-70s, upper 70s. That's summer-like, and with a high today of 90, it was pretty typical of what you would see in the summer, and we are not anticipating much rainfall overnight. A different story tomorrow, though, as some more tropical moisture will be in place. Rain chance not 100%, but it's at 60%, which is fairly high. And then we'll see a less of a chance come Monday and Tuesday of next week. Uh, as far as the boaters go, it's been rough going all week long. It'll be somewhat like that tomorrow again, so small craft should exercise caution. Uh, seas will be two to three feet up to four feet near shore and a moderate chop on the bays and inland waters. Water temperature still very warm in the low to mid 80s up and down the coast. As far as tides go, they're on your screen and we're expecting generally fair skies tonight. Let's go to the seven day quickly and show you that rain chance at 60% on Saturday, 50 on Sunday, 40% chance on Monday and it'll be much better by midweek. Alan will be back with prime time hot headlines coming up right after this. See you. Attention type 2 diabetics. The FDA warns of an increased risk of amputation associated with certain diabetes medications. If you took the diabetes medications Invokana or Invokamet and then suffered an amputation or one of these other serious injuries, call the Rely On Group right now. If you've suffered amputation or any of these other injuries after taking your diabetes medication, call the Rely On Group today. You may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-604-1698. That's 800-604-1698. Everything all right? Actually, you know how Tom had knee surgery? Sure. We found out Brad's been taking his painkillers. It turns out he's been doing it for a while. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. Because my parents told me I have to be responsible. Because my first coach told me, you can do this. Because my boss showed me how to do a good job. Because my teacher helped me see the choices. I'm swimming faster than I ever dreamed. I am a valuable employee. I discovered that I could work as an artist. I will be whatever I want to be. Youth with disabilities should grow up expecting to work and succeed. For more information, visit whatcanyoudocampaign.org. On the next Black Almanac. At the beginning of Southern school integration in many districts not so many years ago, white families began leaving public schools to start private schools or segregationist academies. Later, the political elite so money could be made, refined the process, and now we have charter schools. Sunday morning at 7.30 on ABC7. I am a veteran. My victory was finding the strength to be a champion. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. At DAV, we help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory was finishing my education. My victory was getting help to put our lives back together. DAV provides veterans with a lifetime of support. My victory is being there for my family. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Checking our primetime headlines, new developments in the worst U.S. mass shooting. Authorities are still trying to figure out how, if the shooter acted alone, ABC's Marcy Gonzalez is in Las Vegas following the investigation.
Officials tell ABC News investigators trying to figure out whether the Las Vegas mass murderer acted alone now believe the woman he was seen with in the days before the attack was a prostitute. <laughs> but they believe someone may have helped him based on the elaborate planning, the amount of guns he had in that hotel room, and officials say because some of the ammo was bought under someone else's name. We're very confident that he did not, there was not another shooter in that room. What I cannot confirm to you today and what we continue to investigate is whether anybody else may have known about this incident before he carried it out. With reports, Paddock may have considered other targets, searching for hotel rooms near Boston's Fenway Park and booking rooms across the street from the Lollapalooza Festival in Chicago. Some cities are increasing security for big events, including in Chicago for this weekend's marathon. There's been a uh, double, triple checking of everything. Back in Nevada, a somber reminder of the overwhelming loss. Under the Welcome to Las Vegas sign, 58 white crosses, one for each life taken. I feel that Las Vegas is having one of its darkest days in American history. But I'm trying to shed a light on that by bringing hope. One of those victims, Charleston Hartfield. Thousands gathering last night to honor the Army veteran, police officer, and father of three. If there was a checklist to be an American, Charlie hit every single box and then he made up some boxes. And donations to help all of the victims' families and the survivors keep pouring in with more than nine and a half million dollars raised so far. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Las Vegas. And we have some breaking news on the situation involving former Deputy Frank Bobby. Here are the main of the 18 felony charges not guilty of attempted murder, guilty of kidnapping, not guilty of burglary, guilty of exploiting the elderly. The jury just read these charges and we will have more on them coming up tonight at 11 o'clock. President Trump is ending the requirement that employers must cover birth control for women. The Department of Health and Human Services is releasing new rules giving employers leeway to withhold birth control coverage on religious or moral grounds. The guidelines appear to apply to the hundreds of entities that have filed legal action over birth control mandates. Pol uh, policy experts believe that the new rules could open the door to more employers dropping birth control coverage. The National Women's Law Center says over 55 million U.S. women have birth control coverage without a pocket cost. The center says the mandate saved women more than a billion dollars on birth control pills in 2013. Puerto Rico's death toll from Hurricane Maria has risen to 36. One body was discovered under the ruins of a house. Another person was killed by falling tree while clearing a road. The hurricane left the Puerto Rico infrastructure and communications crippled with electricity and water in short supply. Authorities, according to authorities, 10.7 percent of the island has power, and the FCC says cellular service is at 15.4 percent. And that's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us, and have a great weekend.